Good evening, hello and welcome. You're watching The Nation at 5. I'm Anusha Sonia. Top focus this hour. The news coming in from Canada. Three days after a shooting incident was reported in Brampton in the country of Canada. Now the local police authorities have reported that it was eight Sikh youths who were responsible for these killings. These youths, all of them belong to the Sikh community, are under investigation right now. This is not pertaining to any Khalistani links, but the shooting incident points out to the kind of weapon, firearms and arms and ammunition that these groups have access to. It also points out that this entire narrative around the extremism, growing extremism in Canada, especially the Khalistani groups, is not just something that affects India and relations between India and Canada, but it's also something that has adversely affected the country of Canada. Look at the shooting incident. Does it befit a nation like Canada, a democracy like Canada, to have instances like this? And the government, can the government really be seen to be going soft on these elements? Let's take you through some details uh, which are emerging from this entire investigation, what this entire investigation is all about. Eight Canadian youngsters have been arrested in Brampton, as I earlier said. These youngsters have been arrested on charges of uh, procuring illegal firearms and ammunition. All arrested accused are aged between 19 and 26. The fact that these young minds are being put with these radical thoughts and they have access to this arms and ammunition is a huge question. The accused have been charged with firearm related offences, of course, uh, the local and the domestic laws of the land in the country of Canada. Firearms have been seized from their residence as well when the police conducted searches and all three detained individuals are of Sikh descent. This points out that the minority community, the Sikh community in this country, action after information by, was given by a source in local Gurudwara. India has been pointing out that how these religious places of worship, much revered religious places of worship, have become centers of extremism. Let's uh, cut to some more details coming in, some more uh, charges against the accused that we can tell you. They were allegedly involved in procuring these weapons and of course through illegal means, not through the legal means. They are allegedly involved in illicit a drug trade as well. We've been pointing out that the entire nexus of drugs and firearms and ammunition runs hand in hand. It's not something which is separate completely from each other. The intent of threatening the community, it's a small bunch of people who are involved in these illegal activities, but indeed they tarnish the image of an entire community. And look at what has happened to the relationship between India and Canada. Let me get across to my colleague Siddhant who's joining us on the broadcast. Siddhant, give us more details. Yes, uh, that's right. So, um, you know, talking about the relation between the two countries, you know, it all started by Mr. Justin Trudeau when he triggered the diplomatic standoff and posed that there was uh, there was a reaction, a very strong reaction coming from government of India where they cancelled the visa services. Then obviously they have asked Canada to reduce the strength of diplomats in uh, in the country. Now, uh, you know, uh, the the Canadian side has started dropping. Uh, the hint that India and Canada are going to sit for for a private talks because uh, Canada has realized that the countries that uh, Canada was uh, banking on uh, for for the support against India, those countries have not stood with Canada, or perhaps have not even uh, issued a single strong statement against India. And this is perhaps the reason that now they are on a back foot. In fact, uh, you know, domestically also they have uh, uh, they have given security uh, to. Uh, to, to the High Commission, then also, uh, you know, the actions have been taken, are being taken on the ground with regard to the security of diplomats and uh, security of the foreign Indian Foreign Office there. Uh, uh, so, you know, somewhere it, uh, you know, what we have been given to understand is that uh, that that Canada has understood that uh, that the diplomatic uh, the diplomatic standoff that they have started is not going to end anytime soon unless they will go on a back foot and perhaps uh, uh, you know show some sort of a gesture or, or, or an olive branch to India because yeah. India's stand has always been very clear that they are going to look into the matter if evidence will be provided to them. You know, Siddhant, also, let's also talk about the fact that these instances that have been reported point out that the growing extremism that India has been taking up with Canada, the growing extremism within certain sections of the Sikh community, which has been targeted, which has been a victim of this illegal funding flowing in from Pakistan, the illicit network of drugs and firearms and how young impressionable minds are being targeted is not just something that affects relationship between India and Canada, but even domestically, it is affecting the law and order situation. Multiple instances were reported in Surrey as well. So there are pockets in Canada, there are cities in Canada, counties in Canada, which are adversely affected by this crisis. 
Yes, that's right. It's not about drugs. It's a, it's also about the money laundering and how the unemployed youth in Canada, because unemployment is all time high, the unemployed youth youth in Canada, you know, get some sort of a, of of, of, uh, of funds and you know, uh, so assurance from these groups. And this is perhaps the reason that they start working for these groups. They get brainwashed, and that is how this entire syndicate works. Also, interestingly. Uh, Canada has become a country where lot of money, which uh, black money, which is uh, which is generated in India, gets laundered to Canada and are, inter- are being invested heavily in in the in the Canadian market. So that is also one syndicate which which our agencies are currently uh, are working on. So you know, lot of uh, things right. are there between uh, India and Canada, and perhaps uh, you know, uh, now it is up to Canada to perhaps show some sort of a uh, of a reconciliatory gesture. Or, or or hand over the olive uh, leaf to India, sure. maybe, and then we can we can look for an, for a possibility of uh, relations uh, getting uh, normal. All Absolutely. right, that's uh, that's the overall context uh, in which India and Canada are operating right now. But the story per se points out that if extremism is growing inside a country, and if any country thinks that it's only going to affect some other nation like Canada, in Canada the growing extremism has adversely affected the Indian interest. At some point it will backfire. Pakistan, of course, is a classic example. Mr. Robindra Sajdev is also joining us on the broadcast. Mr. Sajdev, good evening. Thank you so much for speaking with us. This incident, shooting incident in Brampton, what does it signify? I'm sorry, could you please repeat? So, uh, Mr. Sajdeep, there's a shooting incident that was reported in Brampton and about eight uh, Sikh youth have been arrested by the police. There are also illegal firearms and ammunition that have been recovered from them. Uh, this is not directly linked to any kind of raids that were conducted on Khalistani elements, but a rather law and order situation which points out how extremism within Canada is now adversely affecting the country. Mr. Sajdeep. Yeah, sure. Thank you. No, absolutely. So you see the, I mean, there's a vicious circle of connect between, you know, the gang crimes uh, which are sprouting up in Canada, which have been festering for quite some time, and the extremist elements. So yes. that's why the shooting incident that you say has happened. Obviously, it indicates, you know, the growing impact of yes. If you nurture, you know, snakes in your backyard, you do get bit by that. That's one. Yes. Uh, but secondly, the arrest of eight, as you're saying, uh, individuals and all. That is definitely something, in a way, to be said. That's good. That you know, the law and order machinery is acting. In the overall sense, I do think that now in Canada, UK, US, Australia, especially these four countries, the local authorities will be clamping down more on such gang and related crimes because the matter of Pakistan has become, you know, is grabbing world headlines now. And these governments are also realizing that, on the one hand, though they may talk about freedom of speech and expression, but there is mm-hmm. a real problem and a real law and order crime problem, which is also growing concurrently. So these countries will now, uh, hopefully, this is one positive fallout, if one could say, of this whole unfortunate episode between Canada and India, sure. that uh, the local uh, authorities will certainly get more active now. One thinks. Absolutely. You rightly said that you can't have a snake in your backyard. It will at some point affect you as well. Mr. Sajdeh, please stay with us on the broadcast. Mr. Ashok Sajjanar, who's a former diplomat, is also joining us on the show. Mr. Sajjanar, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us at The Nation at Five. We're talking about the story emerging from Canada and Brampton, where eight Sikh youth have been arrested by the local authorities on a shooting incident. Illegal firearms and ammunition have also been recovered. Internally, now, the, the entire phenomena of extremism and how it was given some kind of a subterfuge by the government is adversely affecting the Canadian interests as well because it adversely affects the law and order situation and democratic values. No, absolutely. I think there's a very well